All right, so what we're going to be working on today is interpreting change in exponential models with manipulation. All right, so let's take a look at this word problem and see if we can figure out what they are asking us to find. Now, whenever you're dealing with an exponential model, all right, typically it's in the form of y equals a, it's supposed to be an a, times b to the power of x. Now, the a always represents what's called your initial value, okay? And I'll try to do a better job of spelling initial. E come on, man. Write a nice a, please. There we go, initial. That's your initial value. Now, the b value is either going to be what's called your growth, or it could be known as a decay rate or a decay factor. Now, if that b value is greater than 1, it's a growth. If it's less than 1, but greater than zero, it's decay. Just remember that, okay? So here we got growth, and here we have decay. Now, it says, Ju Wenjun, I'm doing my best there, is an ecologist who studies the change in the tiger population of Siberia over time. The relationship uh, between the elapsed time t in years. So I'm going to highlight that. So t is represented in years. Since Ju Wenjun started studying the population and the number of tigers, n of t, so n of t represents the number of tigers. So it looks like right now we had an initial population of 650. n of t represents the tigers. Okay, and this right here is it definitely a decay factor because it definitely is in between a 0 and a, a 1. And it says complete the following sentence about the rate of change in the tiger population. All right, now it says the number of tigers decays by a factor of 4 fifths every how many years? Now understand 16 over 25 is the decay factor, but we don't want that, we want it to be 4 over 5. So here's what you got to do, a little manipulation here, all right? So this is where you need to know that 16 over 25 could equal 4 squared over 5 squared. Now, 4 squared over 5 squared is the same as saying 4 fifths squared. All right, so this, this is going to help us out, because look what I did. With a little bit of what's called manipulation, I changed 16 over 25 to 4 over 5 in parentheses squared. So let's rewrite our little equation now. All right, I had to pause the video right there. So I think what I was doing was rewriting the equation. All right, so here we go. N of T which is the tiger population, is equal to initial amount of tigers of 650 times, now we have a new decay factor. But remember, this is to the power of t right there. So I just put the t literally right next to the 2. All right, and now, check this out. Here's my new equation right there. Hmm. Now, how many years would it be a decay factor of four-fifths? Well, if I plug in a one, that's not going to be every single year. So basically, i got to get to what? Four-fifths. See if you guys understand what I'm doing here. i got to get four-fifths to the power of one, not four-fifths to the power of two. So if i got to get four-fifths to the power of one, and I have a two there, literally... What number would I have to plug in for t to get that equal to 1? t would have to be a 1 half for that equal to 4 fifths to the power of 1. Because 2 times a half is 1. So the t value, I'm going to highlight the answer, half. I think it's going to be every half of a year it will decay by a factor of four-fifths. So I'm going to type in a half. See if that works. One divided by two. 
Woohoo! I got it right. It's awesome. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'll, I'll do this problem. I've got to pause it. All right, here we go. Next problem. It says, Kylie sent a chain letter to her friends, asking them to forward the letter to more friends. Uh-oh. The relationship between the elapsed time t and hours since... Oh, so t is hours, but t is hours. Okay, since she sent a letter and the number of people, which is p of t, it's the number of people, who receive the email is modeled by the following function. Complete the following sentence about the hourly percentage. All right, the hourly percentage. All right, so we have to the power of 60. Okay, so here we go. Who received the email? Round your answer to the nearest percent. All right, every hour there is a certain percentage being added to. So this is where it becomes very important to pay attention to this factor because this factor is being actually raised to the power of 6. So here's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to do 1.09. I'm going to raise that to the power of 6 and see what that's approximately equal to. Because it says we need to round our answer to the nearest percent. All right. Because it's not just 1.0. If it was 1.09 to the power of t, then that would be a 9. It's increasing it by uh, its additional 9%. we got to do 1.09. Try that. 1.09 to the power of 6. So I get 1.677. So I'm going to write that down. Ready? 1.677, which would round to 1.68. So what does that mean? If, if I have 100% and I add an additional 68%, that is 168%, and that's what, that's what our growth factor is. This is definitely growing, but it's growing by an additional 68% addition to the number of people who received the email. So here's what you have to do. You take you take the original uh, growth factor, but you got to raise it to whatever power that is, and that gives you a decimal. And then you got to change that decimal to a percent. See if I got. See if that's my understanding is correct. Either we'll find out it is correct or it's not correct. All right, and it's correct. Okay. So let's see if they did it a little bit differently. Okay. Um, So they just broke it down because when you when you're adding exponents, it's basically you're doing this power. You're allowed to add these exponents together. So they broke it down a little bit more than I than I did. Okay, but they did get the exact approximate decimal, and I got 68 percent. So this is kind of a good rule just to remember. Okay, this is called the product property. If I have a to the power of m times a to the power of n. That's the same thing as saying a to the power of m plus n. That's the, that's the product property. So that's what they were able to do with this one. That's why they separated it into 1.09 raised to the power of 6. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Okay. All right. After a special medicine is introduced into a Petri dish full of bacteria, the number of bacteria remaining in the dish decreases rapidly. That's good. That means it's, it's working. The relationship between the elapsed time, t in seconds, and the model... All right, so t is in seconds. I'm going to highlight that. t is in seconds. Okay. And b of t is the number of bacteria in the Petri dish. All right, is modeled by the function. So it looks like we have... We start out with a total of... How many bacteria? We start out with a total of 8,500. Then we have a certain decay factor. So here's our decay factor right here. Okay. All right. And then we have it's raised the power of t over 3. So it says complete the following sentence about the rate of change, the number of bacteria. Every second, the number of bacteria is multiplied by a factor of what? So every single second. Now, this is not every single second. This is every 3 seconds. Okay, it says every three seconds it's multiplied by this factor. Now this is where it helps if you guys know your perfect cubes. If you don't know your perfect cubes, then this is not going to make a whole lot of sense. But I want you to understand that 8 can also be written as 2 
to the power of 3. And 27 can be written as 3 to the power of 3. Now, 2 to the power of 3 over 3 to the power of 3 can also be rewritten as 2 thirds to the power of 3, just like that. Now, what's already sitting up there? A t over a 3. So, already up here, all right, is t over 3. So, first of all, I want to make sure you understand that I'm not making this stuff up here. All right, I want to make sure you guys know. I'm going to put alpha y equals enter. I just want to make sure you understand that 2 to the power of 3 over 3 to the power of 3 is actually equal to, watch, 8 over 27. All right? So when I wrote that, that's that. That's what I was doing. Okay. Now, if we simplify this, this equals 2 thirds. Now, these 3's cancel out to the power of t. So every second, remember, what does t represent? t represents your seconds. Every second, the number of bacteria is multiplied by a factor of 2 thirds. Now, every 3 seconds, it's multiplied by a factor of 8 over 27. But every single second, it's multiplied by a factor of 2 thirds. All right, hopefully that made sense. I'm doing my best. All right, here we go. Last problem. All right. It says Barney is an ecologist who studies the change in the tiger population of Siberia over time. The relationship between the elapsed time t and decades since Barney started studying the population and the number of tigers n of t is modeled by this following function. All right, t is decades. All right, so I'm going to highlight that. It's kind of kind of important. T is decades. And n of t is the number of tigers. Okay, unfortunately, it looks like the number of tigers is depleting. All right, okay. Now, it's depleting by a factor of 8 over 25 every single decade. Oh, that's, that's, that's quite a bit. Okay, but once again, we want to know what it, how long it takes to lose not... 8 over 125, but 3 over 5. So once again, once again, what I want you to do is we're going to take the 8. We're going to do 2 to the power of 3. We're going to take 125 and do 5 to the power of 3. And that becomes 2 fifths to the power of 3. But then i got to put the little t next to it. So this is this is a perfect cube. This is a perfect cube. If this is your decay factor, if the b value right here, this is the b value, is 2 fifths, that means it's losing 3 fifths. If you're multiplying something by 2 over 5, that means it's losing 3 over 5. But it's not losing 3 over 5 every single decade. It's losing it every third of a decade. Because I got to get 2 fifths to the power of 1. So the only number that I could plug in for this value of t, the only number I could plug in for the value of t, is 1 third to get it to a 1. So I'm going to say the tiger population loses 3 fifths of its size every, not decade, but every third of a decade. So here we go, step by step. First thing I did was I changed that to the power of 3. Then I put 3 to the power of t, because that's t, so i got to raise it 3 to the power of t. Then i got to figure out what number would I have to plug in here to make this equal to a 1, and that t value is 1 third. So that's 1 third of a decade. Oh, not 1.3, sorry. 1 divided by 3. All right, so see if they made it a little bit easier. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, okay? Well, it looks like they did the same thing as I did. They did two. They did 8 over 25, which is 2 fifths to the power of 3, and then they made this equal to 1, so it increases it. That's what I got, 0.3333333. So 
They did it basically the exact same way. Just change that to what? You got to know your perfect cubes. Also need to know your perfect squares. I think, um, and that should be, make it easier. Good luck.